From a studio high above the clouds of the Okanagan Valley, this is the Cannabis Podcast. Exploring the world of Canadian cannabis culture, one toke at a time. And now, with the very first episode, here's your host, Gary Johnston. I can't tell you how happy I am to welcome you to the very first episode of the Cannabis Podcast. I'm so excited to be here. I have been a cannabis advocate since, well, longer than you probably want to know about. That's one of the reasons I'm here, and I'll tell you more about that as we proceed. Today, on the very first episode, you get double the fun because you get double the Ian. Now, I'm going to introduce you to my son, Ian, who has a long history with podcasts, actually, and, yeah, I guess he has a fairly long history with cannabis. Certainly he does with me. And in addition to that, you're also going to meet an historic Ian, Ian Power from St. John's, Newfoundland, the very first person to purchase recreational cannabis in our country, will be here later as well. Some great conversation is coming up right here on the Cannabis Podcast. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I feel that I have a purpose, and that purpose is that I have been involved in cannabis since well before 1972 when those who have studied any history will know that the Ladane Commission came to the conclusion that cannabis, or marijuana as it was called then, should be legalized in our country. I've been waiting as long as up until October 17th of this year for that to happen. In addition to that, I think that there's a perspective that I bring, as well as my guests will bring, to the Canadian cannabis culture. What's happening here after legalization? It has changed so many things, and yet... So many things remain the same, and in fact, some things have actually kind of gone backwards. And we'll be talking a little bit about that with our guests as the episodes progress as well. So, let's say we get started with our very first guest on our very first episode. From the cannabis-infused studio in the clouds, this is the Cannabis Podcast. I'm especially pleased today that I have a special guest with me. And uh, this gentleman has been with me for a number of years now because he's my son. And I'm very pleased to have him join me for this first segment on our podcast. Please welcome my son, Ian. Hello. Hello, pod people. Thank you for having me. Excellent. Pod people. I like that reference. (laughs) So I'm in the Okanagan area of British Columbia, which, of course, is one of the provinces where cannabis is legal. One of the provinces that has only one cannabis store which is bizarre in and of itself. But you were saying, Ian, there's still a couple of dispensaries that are open down in Vancouver? Yeah, there's a lot of them shut down. Most of the ones near me shut down, but there's there's a lot still open. Um, the one sort of close to me, the guy there, he, he's a really nice guy, and he, he just says that he's he has a, a permit from the city to run the place, and the city says they're not going to um, shut them down. They're not going nice. to spend the resources to shut them down. So he's just kind of hoping for the best, I guess. But yeah, so there's there's several still open around here. Yeah. So access is. And we were chatting the other day, and that's the one thing we both commented on: the bizarre factor of legalization in Canada is now the access after legalization day is harder than it ever has been. Yeah. Yeah. It's harder. <laughs> it's true. It's, it's slightly harder to get here, but only yeah. by uh, several blocks. Yeah, except for you down in Vancouver, that's true. For Mm -hmm. those of us in the interior, the only access one has now is through online, through BC Cannabis stores. And that's the shipping issue that you have to deal with. And of course, now there's a strike with the post office. So a Mm -hmm. lot of people are having their shipments delayed. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, the strike is very, very extremely well-timed. I'm sure they had this planned. I mean, it's- No doubt about it. (laughs) What better time to have a strike? Yeah, it gives them a pretty strong uh, bargaining position to work from. <laughs> but yeah, there's there's still several shops. I went into one today, and there was actually um, two police cars parked outside, and a big big uh, paddy wagon parked outside, and several <laughs> cops standing around milling about. And I th- I thought about it. I I second guessed going in, but I watched other people going in, and I went in and bought a small bit of pot in front of yeah. all these cops, and it was fine. <laughs> And it's weird because I actually, in the summertime, we were over in Nelson prior to legalization. And they, of course, had a dispensary. And I went in and there was a Nelson City police officer standing right outside the door. 
of hmm. that place. And I had similar occurrences, but of course it's a little easier now, at least with legalization, nothing should be happening to you. Right. Yeah. Ian used to host a podcast some years ago that was called Two Guys Being Animals. Uh, I really enjoyed listening to it. He had fun putting it together. And one of the things I liked about it was your hot seat questions that you used to have, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and so I thought, okay, well, I'm preparing this podcast. I need to get some of those types of hot seat questions that I can ask each of my guests to have comparisons of. So if you don't mind, I've got four of them right now. Why don't I throw them at you and see what your responses are? Oh, okay, I'm ready. Your favorite strain? Um... I really like uh, one called Super Lemon Haze mm. it's Sativa. It's like a getting stuff done, clean yeah. the house. Yeah, I agree. I like another that one. Too. I really like is Girl Scout cookies. Those are my two. Those are your, your two faves. Yeah, those uh -huh. those are both nice. I've tried both of those too. Uh, in joints or vape it? Um. Well, yeah. I guess the um the the vape pen is very handy. Like you can take it to a concert or something. It's it's mm -hmm. it's very discreet. Um, but yeah, a lot of my friends, a lot of my friends, uh, roll joints, yeah. joints are around. Yeah. They're still around. It's true. <laughs> Your favorite munchie. Uh, let's go with a pretzel. I'll take a pretzel, please. A pretzel for one. <laughs> and what has been your favorite experience? There's probably many of them, but your favorite experience while high. Oh, geez. Um, I, I, that's a tricky one. Well, they, um, they can't all be easy. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, geez, maybe um Well and, and, and don't don't make it more more complex than it is. Really what I'm saying on that is that do you like to listen to music? Do you like to watch movies? Do you like to read? What you know, what kind of thing do you like doing when you're high? Yeah, I mean I guess it depends. There's definitely some some strains that are good for getting stuff done or yeah. working on things. Um I also like like the sort of situation where when we're playing playing in the jam space, like playing in a band yeah. halfway through, we'll go out and, and mm. smoke a joint and then you come back in and you do like kind of a different style of, totally. of jam because yeah, of totally. because of the influence. So yeah. that sort of thing. I like, I like that sort of thing the most. Oh, very cool. Excellent. Well, I might have to tweak the questions as, as we work along because I want them sure, to be, yeah. the, the thing I liked about it when you guys did it in your show is the responses were fast, you know, give me the answer quick right. kind of thing. And, and mm -hmm. if, it's, if, if the question's not worded correctly, that allows you for that quick response. So I may have to tweak some of those, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, you could ask, there's, I don't know, there's certain things like, like some people, when a, when a joint starts to, to burn unevenly, like some people mm -hmm. call that a canoe, other people call it a, a, a run, I guess. There's like these different Oh, okay. terminologies yeah. that people yeah, have grown that's up true. with. I'm not sure that I've ever actually called that a name. I, I call it, oh, okay. I guess the name I use is I got to wet my finger and stop, stop the burn from running. <laughs> right. Okay. But I never really thought of naming that. So maybe, maybe that's canoeing. Canoeing. In, in, okay. On the West Coast, it's canoeing. It's canoeing. Interesting. Language is so interesting as, as it changes across the country. I'll, I'll have to keep mm -hmm. my ear on for that one. Well, I'm going to let you get on with your day while I get on with mine and uh, go talk to some other people and get everything I need cool. done for episode one here. So thank you so much for helping me put it together, son. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for having me on the podcast or, or should I say the podcast? The podcast. It's funny. That's what your mom said the other day when we were talking about yeah, it too. It's a, <laughs> I probably won't be the last time that someone makes that joke on the show. It probably won't be. And I may have to put that in the official documentation. That this is a podcast mm -hmm. for Canadian cannabis culture. So thank you very much, Ian. You have yourself a great day and we will talk to you soon. Thanks to you too. Bye. I just love the way the universe works sometimes. The interview that you just listened to with my son Ian and myself was actually recorded out of sequence with the other pieces of this episode. But because we have a good rapport and I liked a lot of the bits, I kept it in. When we recorded that, the name of the show was Canucks on Cannabis. I thought, oh, that's going to probably cause me some problems with the hockey team down the coast. So I decided to change it when Ian came up with the reference to the podcast. And luckily for me, when I searched for my URL, CannabisPodcast.com was available. So the universe basically said, that should be the name of your show. 
Well, I mentioned at the start of this first episode that this was going to be a double Ian episode. My son Ian, you've already heard from, and now I'm ready to introduce the second Ian of our podcast episode. This gentleman has been a medicinal cannabis advocate for over 30 years now. He has helped to further the normalization of cannabis both medicinally and recreationally within Canada. His dedication to information research and knowledge building has been paramount to achieving this status among his peers already working in the fields of research and advocacy, both in Canada and international. Now, his dedication to researching and understanding the latest research in the medical cannabis fields of study has helped him to better advocate and help people understand their options in obtaining their medicinal status and which treatments may be best suited for their needs. And ladies and gentlemen, I am so pleased to introduce you to Ian Power. Ian, welcome. Hi. Hi, everybody. And for those who don't know, one of the reasons why I wanted Ian on the broadcast was not only the fact that he has a pretty long history with dealing with cannabis, but also he made history. On October 17th, the day that cannabis was legalized in Canada, you made history, right, Ian? Tell us about that. I did. I, uh, I knew that legalization was upon us. I had heard of the date a month beforehand, so I, uh, I'd been saying for all my life to all my friends, you know, when it goes legal, I will be first in line to buy that <laughs> first gram. And so I did. I, I lined up, and uh, at midnight, you know, I, I went down at 7.30 p.m., yeah, and there was nobody in line, so I quickly ran to Tim Hortons, grabbed myself a large double double, <laughs> and came back and found a close parking spot, lined up, and just it was it was wild. I I, I figured there would be like hundreds of people there early in the night, but yeah. uh, I guess with the weather that we were having that night, it was nine degrees and seventy kilometer per, kilometer per hour gusts of wind, so it brought it down to about minus three and. Oh, there was nobody out there. No so, brave Newfoundlanders. <laughs> <laughs> Only the truly dedicated were there. <laughs> Only the truly dedicated. And I guess I would be the only truly dedicated one here. <laughs> it sounds it sounds like you were. So so there you were first in line. The store opened and, and you went in and you made your first purchase. And made the purchase with uh, Nikki Rose. Uh, she was a young lady that uh, Tweed had picked to also make a purchase. Uh and, uh, yeah, it was, you know, it, it was just really surreal to count down and literally be in the pinnacle history moment for cannabis in Canada. And, and you truly were. And to give it some context, of course, so there you were in Newfoundland. And yeah. here I am out in British Columbia. And yeah. we only have one cannabis store. One. <laughs> and there's 20 in Newfoundland. I know. It's insane. And apparently... There was so much sold in Newfoundland that we could have covered our, all of our debt to Canada in one week, <laughs> right? <laughs> Why is that not a surprise as well? So you have 20 stores now? 20 stores. Wow. Just, right? And, and, in, and again, in our province, which is the home of BC Bud, right? <laughs> right. Beautiful Cannabis Canada, as we, I've always called it. We, we have one government store, one, that's in Kamloops, which is about two and a half hours away from me. And right. then we have one private store, which is over in the East Kootenays in Kimberley. And that's probably right. about five hours away from me. <laughs> I don't understand that. I don't either. So I was, I was not only impressed that you were the first one there to make the first legal purchase of cannabis in our country, but also the fact that you had a store to make that purchase in was pretty impressive I had a to store. me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, it, and it's the closest one as far east as you can go. And uh, so our countdown, our set, the sale there happened exactly at midnight. Yeah, right at that time. Not, yeah. not, not even a second over. So uh, I, I am the first man to buy a gram, and she's the first woman. She bought a, uh, an eighth, a half quarter. Oh, very and, cool. Uh, so we have two so, marks in the history books. Yeah, and uh, I bought Donegal, the, the strain Donegal, because mm -hmm. I'm a member of the Donegal Cannabis Society. Okay. I've been for quite some time, and the family name comes from Donegal, and I actually... Uh, what I didn't realize that night was that I have a cousin who actually lives in Donegal Island. So, <laughs> oh, very cool connection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, that is very they, cool. 
Dave, uh, the Donegal uh, Cannabis Society. I, I was just featured in the local newspaper there about a week ago. Nice. And they, they've reached out to me and they're sending me a care package, buttons, pins, and uh, a hat and a T-shirt. You know, got to represent wherever I go. And Absolutely. Uh, it was quite an honor, you know, that they reached out to me and said, we're going to send you this care package. And, yeah, very nice. Yeah. It's, it, it's, you know, it, every single friend I have to date is because of cannabis. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, nice. yeah. I, I, w- I would tend to agree with that. It's, it's kind of the same for me as well. The one thing that I found interesting about your purchase, Ian, is uh, I understand you didn't smoke it. No, I still have it. It's yeah. in an undisclosed location in a safe. How oh, nice. You know, it's, uh, for its historic it's, value. I, for its his, And it's probably its monetary value because uh, I had someone offer me over $100,000 for it the next day. You're kidding. Down. I'm not joking. I, I wow. didn't know if it, it could have been a police officer. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess. I, just said, I said, no, that's going to be a part of history and staying with me forever. And the guy was like, did you really just turn down 150000 U.S.? And I said, yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a dedicated cannabis advocate. <laughs> right? I could use the money, but, you know. Yeah, couldn't we all, right? <laughs> right? 150000 but then it would be trafficking and, you know. Absolutely, yeah. And yeah and a million-dollar fine. So and, I had and, to respect it. Decline, you know? Yeah, and because uh, as we've as we've realized, this move to legalization is uh, I'm finding it really a dual edged sword. You know, it you, is. You made one comment I remember seeing on the news, and the comment that you made was the stigma ends tonight. It does, and, and I thought that was the best quote that I had heard about that first legal cannabis sale. But then I've been talking with other friends of mine. I have another friend who, uh, in fact, is going to be on another episode. He started a company called OkanaganZ.com, which he calls a marijuana media company. So he's just doing marijuana and cannabis stories. And that's what they're focused on. And we were chatting the other day. And the stigma, unfortunately, has not left as, as much as many of us thought it would. I think it has well, left between us, like those of us who are into the cannabis field, yeah. but those who aren't, there, there's still that stigma. Have you found that same thing? Uh, actually, I find Newfoundland to be a lot more progressive about it. Okay, uh, good. You know, we, the, the RNT, well, Newfoundland can stably, they sent out notices to the quote-unquote illegal shops uh, to shut down. So, like, yeah. they could have just went in and raided them and been you know, fully about it. And, sure. but they, they gave people notice and some shops did close down. Uh, others didn't and they ended up getting raided, but uh, you know, I, I honestly believe that all the smaller dispensaries should have been included in the whole legalization. Process. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. You know, you, you'd have, you employ people, the money stays local. It's not going, you know, overseas or, or to American companies. Absolutely. Um, and it would bring the price down, for, especially for patients, because it, it hasn't gotten any cheaper for patients since legalization. No, it certainly hasn't. And in again, in this part of the country, access has, has been incredibly hard for patients since legalization. Well, that's that's yeah. not happening so, in Newfoundland? They can still access it fairly easily? Uh, no, it's about the same. It's it for is, medical eh? patients. It's still hard. You know, it's even myself, you know, I, I, I did came kind of famous for it, but uh, it hasn't made it any easier for me to access cannabis. Uh, a lot of people do talk about staying with their, you know, free market dealers. Yeah. And, you know, you got to do what you got to do, right? Yeah. Like, I can't you say do. it's the best thing, but I'm not saying it's the worst thing. Like, I, I support independent dispensaries. I support mm-hmm. people who grow at home and share with other patients. You know, that's, that's yeah. the biggest bonus out of this is that you can share and not get in trouble yeah absolutely like I, I i i can go and give someone who's over the, who's legal age right in front of a police officer i could hand them a half bag of cannabis and it's not illegal so that's that's a one little good thing but uh that is i think the whole advertising restrictment is uh a bunch of heard my word for poppycock as <laughs> my grandfather would say yeah um uh, just where alcohol is be, being targeted towards everyone and is, you know, thrown in everybody's faces. 
why can't cannabis be advertised on TV and in newsprint? And that's the thing I find most bizarre about the advertising rules. So you look at a beer commercial, as you just said, and 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 all you see is people, people, yeah. people, people. And, <laughs> and according to the re- regulations for advertising to advertise cannabis, there can be no people in the image. <laughs> like, right? like what's up with that? Well, then I, maybe maybe companies should just advertise strictly straight cannabis and with no people and just a big pot leaf on the screen. And yeah, you know. it, it's just bizarre. So there is there's many areas of this legalization that have, I think, created even more confusion. What's your assessment of of where we are so far? And in, in we've been a little over a month now. How do you think over it's a gone? Month? Uh, I think they underestimated the the demand. Yeah. Uh, mostly what I'm seeing is uh, senior citizens in the tweed store downtown, uh, at Dominion, grocery store, Loblaws, right? You can buy yeah. cannabis at the grocery store, which really? is mind-blowing. Yes, you can go <laughs> wow. buy a grocery, <laughs> and you can go over to the liquor store, and then you can go into the cannabis store. I'm definitely All in the wrong things. province. <laughs> All right, Newfoundland's very progressive. Like I said, we're very progressive. On a yeah, lot of I'll say. Well, that is cool. Yeah. I'd like to give a shout out to the only independent store here, Thomas Clark, THC Distributing. I'd like to say, you know, he's doing a great job and a- as the absolutely. independent running company, right? Like, yeah, that's a, a dream of his for 25, 30 years. I'm glad to see that he's doing great and his business is going really well. And absolutely, you know, more power to him for being an independent and not being, you know, a big corporation. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And in fact, on that regard, I, I was aware of, of Thomas H. Clark. I love the fact that yeah. his name is not actually her, but because everybody recalls him that, he gets the THC in his name. Yes, That's pretty he gets cool. the THC. And the yeah. thing I liked about his story is that the first pot that he sold was to his dad, which I thought was pretty yeah. cool. So where do you see ultimately legalization going in, in Canada, Ian? I would hope to see that it would go for advertising and be allowed because there's a huge amount of careers that are waiting to start because of advertising. Uh, I would like to see the medical program, because we're talking about phasing it out, but to uh, become more robust and to be subsidized by the taxes from Mm -hmm. recreational cannabis. The price for medicinal should be $2 a gram and no more, in my opinion. People are sick. $2 $2 yeah, exactly. gram would be nice, you know? Mm-hmm. People are sick. Shouldn't be profiteering off the sick. You know, How a true. lot of other aspects happen that's profiteering off the sick. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, independent growers should be included going forward. They should look at that because with the supply, with demand so high and the supply low, those people can pick up the slack, Yeah. give the bigger producers a chance to grow more product, uh, these people are, are knowledgeable. They've been at it. Some of them are at it 50 years, 60 years. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, you know, just like the regular, the big companies, they all be tested independently by an independent company. Uh, yeah. You know, oversight from the government, but not too much government control. Yeah. Because that just gets in the way. That gets in the way a lot. Yeah. 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 It, it has a history of that, doesn't it? <laughs> and I got to tell you, you know, my two biggest inspirations in all of this are Mark and Jody Emery. They How true. Risked and lost everything for this. You know, they've always so been true. my inspiration. Yeah, mine too. Um, yeah, mine too. I, I follow I, both I, of them on Twitter and, and they are, they are continuing to be out front. You no know, challenging are, the good, legalization. Good. I'm glad. Yeah. I, I'm very glad they are, you know, after their charges and everything, they didn't run away like a lot of people would. They yeah. doubled their efforts. Yeah. yeah. That's what you have to do as an activist. If you get in trouble with the law, so be it double your efforts afterwards because after all things do change. They, they certainly do. And and I was, I was proud of Mark that uh, he went into Quebec. Was it last week, I guess, because Quebec has made this uh, piece where you can't have anything that has the words cannabis on it in any of their stores, like the bongs and stuff. And I thought that was really bold to Mark to, to go and and show his support for the industry by doing that. Yeah. Well, I'm glad he, I, I watched the video and I was glad that he was out doing it right in yeah. front of the Quebec legal store. Exactly. You know, there's a huge market. Lots yeah. of Canadians could be employed, right? And and one of the best quotes I saw from Mark, I think over the last few weeks was when they were talking about the problem with the um, av- amount of availability 
and the legal and the retail aspects of it. And his quote was, hmm, let's see. Our cannabis culture store probably sold more marijuana than any other store in the world. And nobody came to ask yeah. us a single question. <laughs> right. Doesn't that say it all? Right. No one's had any wonder if it was, if the, well, I would know that they would guarantee it would be safe products, you know? Yeah, exactly. Nice clean. Yeah. You know, no use of illegal pesticides. Yeah, all know, that stuff that, that we obviously have some concerns about, but yeah. Well, you know, uh, I have a friend who's a uh, uh, Sage Maldi from uh, America, and she's a big activist, and she's spreading around awareness about neem, which is a pesticide that, you know, some growers will use after the plant goes to flower, which you're not supposed to do. Oh, okay. And mm -hmm. she is linked neem with uh hyper syndrome that you know where people smoke cannabis and then they get you know the stomach cramps and everything like that so she, oh, okay she's been bringing about awareness for that uh wow. i'm super proud of her for that you know like yeah absolutely not everybody knows every little detail she's one of the foremost activists in in, in america that i know of right oh very uh, cool very i cool. i also uh had partnered up a bit with uh magical butter Garen Angel and Chris Whitener, they actually okay. gave me a plaque with my Newsweek article on it. Uh, ah, nice. And uh, I've been an active member of their forums for about two years. So yeah. they, they teach you how to infuse all your food and make everything you eat medicated. So okay. they're a great company to follow and to, to look out for, you know, movers and shakers. Garen yeah. Angel is uh, challenging the norms around the world and uh, helping legalization further. And Very cool. There's a lot of people. I, I could I could probably list off a thousand people off the top of my head. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's certainly are. growing. Uh, it, it, is, it is. It yeah. is. It's an exciting like a weed. time. Yeah, very, very good. Like yeah. <laughs> Growing like a weed. Now, now, who would have thought of that? <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. So one of the, the reasons why I wanted to start this podcast was not only to have a conversation with people like you and people like me that have been involved with cannabis for a while, but also to, to touch on those people that are just curious about it. That are, that are coming into legalization and thinking, and, and there are a number of people like this that I am associated with. In fact, I've had probably a half a dozen of them approach me ever since I started talking about this podcast and, and where we're going to go with it, to ask about when you're just coming in, what's the best approach? So I would ask you, Ian, what's your best advice for somebody just coming in and, and wanting to try cannabis? What, what would you suggest the approach they take? I, I would take it easy. Slow and low is is always the best method. Like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, get some indica, get some sativa. Yeah. Take your indica and try that. Take a couple of puffs or a couple of hits off a of vaporizer or, you know, yeah. and see how it works out for you. Don't go, you know, don't jump in head first because uh, you might you might have a bad experience and it might yeah. be too strong for you and steer you away from something that's literally made for us. Yes. Uh, just take it slow. A lot of uh, I've, I'm an indica person. Sativas mm -hmm. just do too much for me. Uh, okay. I, I, I'm, you know, 90% of the time it's indica. Yeah. Um, as far as edibles, take it very slow. Yeah, very slow. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, because it, it, it's, you know, it will take a lot longer to, for the effect to come on because, you, you know, it has to metabolize in your body and go through your liver and your kidneys and everything before yeah. it hits your brain. And... So sometimes, you know, people can get frightened by edibles. Uh, you know, if I, I only need a small bit of an edible and it just knocks me out completely. It does, eh? Uh, yeah. I don't advocate driving under the influence. I don't do it nope, myself. No, none of us uh, should. Mm -hmm. you know, nobody should ever drive under, impaired under anything. That includes, like, prescription medication, too. Right? Yeah, well, of course like, it does, yeah. Pot, yeah. Right? Like, and, and it's not the same as alcohol. You don't get the same impairment. I don't know why they made the law to compare it to alcohol. Well, because they don't understand. They don't no, understand that the impairment they don't is different. It. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's completely different. Yeah, yeah completely different. I, I so so heartedly agree with that statement. Okay, well, that's good advice. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. I wish more of us had been involved in the process. Yeah. Through, in government. Like, you know, not to say anything against Bill Blair, but what, what does he really know about cannabis except for arresting people? Exactly. Other than he's arrested a bunch right. of people. Yeah, exactly. You know, and now, now he's profiting off those same people. Yeah. I, and right. I guess that's the, you know, with, with the law and, and what we've already talked about, you know, not driving under the influence, but the part that surprises me about the new legislation 
is how many people have been busted simply for having it in their car close yeah. to the driver. Like, like right? no, nobody's smoking it, but somebody has it and they're getting busted for it. Like, like that's just that's so right. weird. No, that isn't that's right. I agree. Right. You know, if they do their swab test, that apparently doesn't work all the time in cold climates. Yeah. The Drager 5000. That's the. Yeah, one, yeah. Right. Not even, not even proven. And not even proven. It. No, totally. And. If you don't have any cannabis in your system, what's the harm with having it on the seat in the glove box or on the floor of the back seat? Exactly. You know? I mean, I, I no guess. No different than having a dozen beer on the back seat of, uh, of the car not opened. Yeah, exactly. Not seal opened. Is, yeah. Not precisely. Opened. Yeah. If uh, that seal isn't broken, then it shouldn't be illegal. No, it shouldn't be. I agree wholeheartedly. So may, that's one of the things I would like to see change is, yeah, as this I'd like to see that change. carries on. Yeah. They won't bother pulling me over because I'll give them an hour lecture on cannabis. <laughs> 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 Again, like uh, I don't smoke, and I and I write down the time when I do imbibe. So okay, so you have accurate over, like, information you can present to uh, them. Well, ten seventeen in the morning, and then I wait three hours. Okay. Right, so okay. ten seventeen because that was the date that it was legal, right? Ah, so, of course. Uh, ah, ten of course. seventeen <laughs> is the new four twenty. So America <laughs> has four twenty. We now have ten seventeen. Oh, right? I love that. I haven't heard that right? before, so but I like 10, that. <laughs> yeah, I actually have a T-shirt uh, with that on it. Ten seventeen is the new four twenty. That means yeah. I have twenty minutes until ten seventeen, yeah. my time. <laughs> See how perfect is that, right? You the podcast. And that will be perfect. Have your, have your morning cup, and then ten seventeen in the night. Time right, so no, no more waiting up till four. Oh, there you go. Oh, I like so that. In, right, gonna... so ten seventeen at night, you can sit back, relax. The kids have gone to bed. You know, it's you know parent time or adult time. <laughs> Excellent. And to your point, it's ours. The the U.S. you say ours. Four twenties, ten seventeen is ours. I love that, Ian. That's 10, great. Seventeen is ours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fabulous. What a great way to start your day with a nice uh, perfect day. Yeah, and, yeah. and and, and that is nice. daytime. I am a sativa guy. A lot right. of the work I do is with audio and, and stuff, and, and so it doesn't really impact my ability to do my work. It just makes my yeah. work more enjoyable, yeah. far more enjoyable. Yeah. Far more enjoyable. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. One of the other things that I wanted to touch on, my son hosted a podcast years and years ago, and one of the things that they brought into every episode was a series of what they called hot seat questions. Oh. So now I have, they're not difficult. Trust me, they're not difficult. You don't, okay. you don't need to think about them very much. But that's just want to throw these at you and get your response. So what's your favorite strain? Yeah. Uh, right now, Donegal, but usually it's Jack Hare. Yeah, Jack Hare is really nice, isn't it? I haven't tried the Donegal. Yeah. I'll have to give it's, that a try. It's a very, a lot of energy. Okay. A lot of energy. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Do you prefer joints or vaping? Uh, joints. Okay. I, I am the king of the joints. Okay. Yeah. Have yeah. you tried much vaping at all? I have a G Pro uh, vape pen, but the tip broke. So oh, okay. I actually, I don't have a vape at the moment. Gotcha. Vaping in the winter time, joints in the summer. Ah, there's a good idea. See, yeah. I I used to have a, a volcano from Stores and Bickle, oh, and I, love I actually killed two of them. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> I'm the only you person I know who call it chronic. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, who killed two volcanoes over the course oh of my life. So, so I can <laughs> I continue to vape. So, your your preference is joints. What's your favorite munchie, Ian? Um, Hostess hickory sticks. Oh, those are tasty, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can understand that one. If you're if you're not into the cannabis, because I'm not, I'm assuming uh, like me that you don't mix your cannabis with any alcohol. So I don't drink at all. You don't drink at all. Well, then that's the answer to that question. I haven't had any alcohol in my system in 13 years. Wow, oh, good for you. That keeps it clean. I I just have a beer every once in a while. I'm not a big drinker either. Do you prefer cake or pie? Uh, pie. Okay, and yeah. uh, the last one: edibles or flour? Flour. Flour. Yeah, that's my preference yeah. too. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining me on the Cannabis Podcast. Ian, Mr. Ian Power is who I've been speaking with, ladies and gentlemen. He was the first person to purchase, the first male to purchase legal cannabis in our country and the one who initiated the concept of 1017 as the time that we 10, should all 17. get together. I love that. Yeah, I love it too. Yeah. Excellent. Any final Great words for, for the people? Uh, I would just say for everybody out there, come to Canada and enjoy our cannabis. There's some good advice and a good right. offer. Well, thank you very right. much, Ian. You enjoy the rest of your right. day, and I appreciate you for being you on the now. contest.
Thank you for having me. It was my pleasure. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Take care. It was. Thank you. Thank you now. Oh, that went very fast. We did it. I can't believe it. We have come to the end of episode one of the Cannabis Podcast. Thank you so much for coming along for the ride. I hope you have enjoyed the experience and you'll be back for more. There's so much more. I'm going to try to squeeze in here like strain reviews, keeping track of how many retail stores are open across the country, all of those kind of things, plus lots of neat and interesting facts about Canadian cannabis culture. Next week, I have David Wiley lined up. He's going to be our conversation next week. He is the founder and owner of OkanaganZ.com, a marijuana media company based here in the Okanagan Valley of British Columbia. Great conversation coming up next week. Plus, I think we'll do a strain review on Kinky Kush. All of that coming up next week, right here on the Cannabis Podcast. From the Cannabis Infused Studio, high above the Okanagan Valley, this was the Cannabis Podcast. Podcast.